but right now he is getting punched in the face, punched in the face, punched in the face. Okay, that is an out of context clip taken from yesterday's match between Hans and Magnus because Magnus took home the victory in dominant fashion. Maybe someone can help me understand this Twitter X clip, by the way, that Magnus posted. I don't know basketball or what the reference is, but it applies today, that clip, because Hikaru Nakamura turned up against Hans Neiman. We're picking it up here in the three plus one Hikaru's got the white pieces hands with black here clock times on the left what a game this is we're diving in we see knight f3 on the board and d5 in response from Hans Neiman he takes the center Hikaru going for this opening all day going back to his bread and butter explodes the board with c4 but after e6 he doesn't want d4 central control he goes full b3 cowboy prepares the fee and cheddar we get bishop d6 and what's going on at this moment the goat enters the studio start some commentary with the man who invented chess robert hess himself and just listen to some of the insight that we got from magnus carlson here <laughs> absolutely incredible Magnus just dropping bombs we haven't heard chess insight like that since Vichy letters in on what grandmasters eat before big tournament games mushrooms excellent stuff let's carry on with the game here Bishop b2 now played castles and stop it Hikaru goes for a double fee and cheddar what a cheese rookie 8 now played and look at that the bishops crossing swords a beautiful Beautiful sight on the chessboard, not advised in church, and Hans fights back with the overpowered prawn to sea ships, sets up the old party hat pawn formation. I even have one with me right here, just finished playing some bullet chess, wearing this, many wannabe grandmasters do it. We now see this move of d3. Is he really a super GM or a very naughty boy? Stock Barnacle not impressed, wants the center. Neiman now takes it. Look at those squares under siege castles now played and bishop g4 pin and win baby h3 now played to fight against it takes control of g4 and i4 the bishop now dropping back and queen c2 getting out of dodge knight bd7 and knight c3 both players got their bits out lovely stuff rook c8 eyeballs that queen never comfortable but hikaru literally doesn't care he picks up his pony and sends it on a tour de horse headed for that f5 square how does neiman fight back well not in the right way i've analyzed a lot of chess since i started this channel about three years ago now and i swear when you've got the center here so often stock mollusk just wants to hold on to it don't push the pawns create a chink in the armor unless you have to so what we see played is d4 but not engine approved just opens the bishop, opens the e4 square. We now see takes, pawn recaptures, knight e4. On the one hand looks passive, but after takes is the best move. You know, that knight was a bit nasty, hits the bishop and stuff. We don't see bishop recaptures, which might look logical, but actually pawn takes, because even though this one is kind of crying a little bit now, you're about to rumble the f pawn and look at the space you then start gaining with the white pieces. And now Hans just really goes wrong, doesn't show the understanding. He should advance the C prawn, cemento the center, then drop back with bishop f8, a little bit of defensive play. But he goes bishop e5, sets up a tactical shot with d3, eyeballing a loose bishop on b2, but it's easily parried, and then Hikaru kicks on. Now you shouldn't go queen d3 to block eight. You wander into this nasty knight maneuver. So queen d2 selected instead. Now f4 is on the card, still c5 is best, but Hans plays the terrible pawn to d3, given the double question marks of doom, because after this one captures here, knight takes f4 it's like vamos look at hikaru steamrolling now the knight drops back and he picks up this pawn on d3 sorry that was weird like a glitch or some kind of lag or something 
I just need to look into this technical issue a second here. I mean, this is classic chess com up to their usual tricks, clearly trying to sabotage me because I was going to leak a picture of Danny Wrench playing with the servers. Plus, I've got some unseen footage of him dressed up on a weekend doing his chess analysis. For some reason, they're coming after me here. Queen b6 check now played and the king sidesteps to h2. Hands now hits more dark squares. No coincidence that white doesn't have a dark squared bishop. The queen drops back to c2 and the writing's on the wall on the king side there. The bishop's about to get trapped and so that's why we see the ugly, ugly move of pawn to f6. Hands fine gold, not impressed with that one but it was necessary because now when Gary the debt collector starts banging down the door the bishop finds a square and knife f5 comes on the board Kasparov famously said that getting a knight there is worth a pawn well guess what Hikaru's a pawn up tells you the sorry state of the black position rook cd8 plate now we see rook ad1 queen c7 x-raying the f4 pawn and the king there and now everyone all the fans were hoping for rook fe1 set up a rook tank I finally said it, even though there'd be a pawn in the way, <clears throat> excuse me, and it didn't come. Hikaru takes here on d8. We see rook captures and now queen f2. Over protecting the f pawn and the king. Eyeballing the knight. Apparently queen a5 best according to stock dolphin. But instead we see knight e6. Gets the question mark. And now queen g3. The queen's like honey. I got you. Don't worry. I'll keep you safe from these wannabe intruders here. It's a modern marriage. Rook d2 sets up some kebab action. And and Hikaru just plows boldly forth with e5, using f6 as a hook. So takes was played. Pawn recaptures. The rooks had its eyes open, and there's some really nice attacking ideas. Knight d6, h4. Maybe that's then why Neiman didn't take the pawn on a2, which is the top choice of the Silicon Overlord. He got spooked by the attack. Goes bishop g6, but after h4, h6, h5, now he just goes wrong here but it's a very tough defensive task apparently you should go bishop h7 looks really miserable though eliminating this monster stallion of a knight there looks natural but now you connect the pawns those ones are now running new problems the knight finds a square here hikaru now goes e6 offering the exchange here which hands goes in for queen d8 was possible whose king is really safer not entirely uh, clear queer that would have been a very weird slip of the tongue now we see queen uh, queen g3 king g3 played i'm completely thrown don't usually lose the composure right we now get king f8 played and hikaru completely blunders here because he should go rookie one come behind his advanced spearhead point but he plays the incredible f6 double question mark complete blunder uncharacteristic gives the pawn on e6 why am i showing you this game you're gonna see it's absolute drama now we see bishop e4 idea being that the bishop can rotate into here we see captures this one takes with check king e7 but here's the problem hikari was a pawn upright so now pawns are just level but after the king centralized we start to see some problems because this knight can start hopping horrible in blitz especially and this one is kind of babysitting the pawn plus it's harder to get at these pawns even though usually bishops are good with pawns on both sides here not the case we're going to see why bishop e8 c5 now played a3 in response b6 and b4 hands i was about to say hikaru can do anything else we see that pawn expanding knight e6 bishop g6 knight d4 centralizing hikaru takes not, not the most precise but we're sticking with the game bishop d3 now and you can play knight f5 immediately but not done we get a little bit of tickle not in real life of course not on the board no love lost between these guys and after knight f5 this time why do we not see takes well the end game is actually lost 
the king can march over, munch this pawn, you know, there's a right way to do it, and you sort of shoulder this king out at the same time, so it can't come and eat here. It's a lost end game. This one then gets distracted, trying to deal with this. So, the knight not touched. Instead, we see king f3. Now we see the knight rotating, attacking. This one covers now, but it's gone so far. This one now marches in. The black king hits the bishop. It saves itself, but how about this? Knight d6, an octopus that Stocktopus can be proud of. Love it when they hit the sixth and third ranks. And now we see king f4. Takes here is played. Surely this is just absolutely game over Three pawns now for Hans, one for Hikaru, but watch this. Houdini himself marching in, picking up the H-pawn, and Hans now only has one winning move, and it's king e5. Very cool line. The idea is you shoulder out the white king. You know, it can't step to g7 to get the pawn running. So you try something like this, but now when you try and run, the king steps in, you know, you just can't make it work. Any combination you go for, even if you step back, then the knight starts checking, and what do you do? How do you stay with everything? You know, here then the pawn drops, and so many different lines, you cannot get it running. So that was a winning move missed we see c3 they're so low on time no criticism now this pawn drops and c2 another blunder terrible blunder stockfish having a meltdown damn i called it the right name again and knight c4 was apparently a drawing move but missed this was played hikaru snaps it off knight recaptures king g6 and the red carpet's rolled out hands does get this one running though we get the race but not really hikaru miles ahead but he now goes wrong should check from here then you simply bring the queen in here and black's in a kind of zugzwang if you come back here bang this drops if you move the knight this drops you know this sort of thing and if you hold on just play a waiting move king marches all the way in it soon becomes terminal you know imagine a king on b3 for example so that was the way to go but missed. This one on the board brings it right back to a draw here because after all these checks, there's a problem. You can never start bringing the white king closer so long as black can always play a2. But herein lies the problem. We proceed some more through the game. Another check, queen d5 check, and now hands doesn't show the understanding. Has to go king b2 to maintain the threat of pawn a2 here going through. But he goes here. Suddenly, the white queen can get in, or king e4 also works because you're using that tempo gain to bring the king in. And now if you go a2, well you can't, the queen wins it. You can go king b2, played in the game, but now we get queen b5 check, king here. Another one now, stopping the pawn from going to a2. King b2, and again you've picked up that vital tempo. Now of course if you advance as you'd like to do, the knight's dropping off the board, and that's soon going to be lost. And what else to do? Say you check from here. Well, now the king can step back. The knight can return, but you just slowly march in the pieces. Here's a sample line. That's one sample checkmate that could have been on the board. This the final position. Hikaru takes down hands in absolutely dominant fashion. Close in the 5-0 uh, or 5-3 part, but then we see Hikaru just pull ahead in the three-minute bit, and bullet, you know, that was good for Hikaru too. Forget the final score. Dominated, absolutely smoked. What a round that was. And tomorrow we pick up with Magnus Ali Reza. Thanks very much for watching. Have a look at the video on screen if you want more epic chess. And I hope to see you soon. Cheers.